Welcome to Film Feast. Where two sister grill masters watch a movie, yap about it, and then make recipes inspired by it. Today's movie, we're talking all about Officer and a Gentleman. If you haven't seen this movie, it's about a young guy who's trying to get into the Navy. It's very romantic. That's pretty much the gist of the movie. A lot of steamy scenes. We have to first off give a shout out to our good friend Hot Tommy from the Gallery Backyard Barbecue and Griddle because he is the reason why we watched this movie and why we're talking about it this week. I've never seen this movie before. I've heard a lot about it. Obviously, it's one of those titles that gets thrown around in pop culture. I'm glad that T Hot Tommy referred us to it because I've always wanted to see it. It's been one of those ones that's always been on my list. We can officially say we've seen it now. Now, Kiki, what did you make that's inspired from this movie? So this movie was hard to think of like a food to make with it. There wasn't a lot of food talk throughout I the didn't, movie. I instantly knew what I was making. I, so did I, but it was, I felt like it was like kind of a stretch because like normally I feel like there's like a food that naturally goes with the movie itself. But like, I was like, nothing's really like hit me except for the steamy love scenes. Oh, I wasn't thinking that at all. <laughs> really? I literally thought this could be the first one where we make the exact same thing. I was so not thinking that. I okay, was like, I don't know what you're going to make. I found mine to be like so obvious that as soon as I heard it, I was like, all right, I have to make that. Really? Yes. Oh, okay, now I can't wait to see what you made. I because... cannot wait to see what you made that's hot and steamy. Okay, so I wanted to make something like spicy and steamy because of the love scenes. Because if you've seen this movie, that's all it is. It is. As far as I'm concerned. Can I say though, it's steamy, but like in today's day, not enough actual nudity. I was what? let down by the actual nudity. You I, didn't see a lot of nudity. I felt like you saw quite a bit of nudity. And it was like too much on the, like, maybe it's just me personally, <laughs> but like, I felt like it was way too much in the love scenes. I'm like, get to the plot of the movie here, people. I get that it, maybe it's like a romantic movie that was Maybe like, that was cutting attention. edge at the time. It was too much. I agree. It was, it was too much. At first I was like, I am here for this. And after I was like, okay. I'm like, can we get back to the story? Is he going to make it? Is he not? What <laughs> stage of he's in the training is he at? Like, I was, Agreed. I was way more interested in the Navy training part of the movie than I was in I thought the, you were going to say the naked, Okay. No, <laughs> I wasn't so concerned with the, I wasn't there for the naked scenes. It was too much. I feel like they lingered way too long in them too. It was like naked scene. I feel like movies of today, it's like sex scene. They're you know, like, you get it. They're yeah, doing it. or sex scene. These one, this no. one still had a romance to it. No, I'm saying the movies of today are raunchier. No, this I feel like this one was pretty raunchy. It was raunchy, but like tender raunchy. You got full frontal boob, so, full frontal and sidal boob. You something new. I've, we've all seen boob. <laughs> Well, boob is like, it's it's had its time, okay? Let's get to the good. <laughs> is this video That's gonna get played? That's called a porno. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, let's get to seeing some genitals. <laughs> Buddy. That is literally what I'm saying, basically. But, okay. I don't mean, I'm, okay, back out, let's back out. <laughs> okay, so what I made for this, to, that was inspired by this movie, spicy, steamy, smashed sun chokes. They're Ooh. hot, they're spicy. They're all the flavors of a sexy love scene. Okay, I was totally, that is not what I was <laughs> expecting at all, but love it. That's what's creative about this show is that you get inspiration from anything. Did I, did I think that Kiki was gonna be making a sun choke today based on Officer and a Gentleman? <laughs> I'm gonna say absolutely not. So these are sun chokes. If you're not familiar with them, they are, they're also called Jerusalem artichokes mm -hmm. or fartichokes because if you don't cook them right, they have a tendency to make you fart. Okay, I literally <laughs> was just gonna say, did you say fartichoke? Honey? I said fartichoke. Okay. <laughs> so they're not artichokes at all. They, they're tubers. They look kind of like potatoes, but they have less starch than potatoes. So a can lot you of- eat them raw? You can eat them raw, but again, the farting, like it's best to cook them. A lot of raw veg can make you tooty. Mm -hmm. They're good fermented, they're good roasted, not so good boiled, they're better like high heat sear type of situation. So you can get them from normally farmer's markets. They call these um, like, a, they're like a homesteading staple because they take over gardens and they can withstand drought and all sorts Ooh, of stuff. So, so easy to grow? Very easy to grow. Okay, I'm adding that to my grow list this year then. So they, they also, they grow as tubers. You can't plant seeds. You have to get the tubers, plant them just like potatoes. So what we're gonna do is boil them first. They do take a while to cook. They have the texture of kind of like a water chestnut. Ooh. If you, if you know what water chestnuts taste like, the texture is kind of similar. Not I feel like, like a that's like mm, some people are like texture on that kind of not, but I'm I'm so into that texture. But they have their own flavor, so they have their very own distinct flavor. So while they're boiling, I'm gonna mix up like a sexy spicy sauce to go over top of them. Ooh. So I've got some spicy harissa, and I'm adding in some vegetable broth. I'm at the end of this little jar, so here's a little tip. Add in some liquid, shake it up, 
use up the rest of that jar. You wanna make sure you get every last little drip here. It pains me when I see people like in vids and stuff, like throwing away the jar that hasn't been rinsed. I'm like, yes. you are throwing away del delicate flavor. Yes, so, and then I also like to add some honey because if you're doing Ooh. something really hot, you gotta balance it off with some honey. Yeah, that's a game changer. Yeah, it, it's not super sweet. It's just nicely balanced. Mm -hmm. Tons of gin, or garlic, sorry, not ginger. Garlic from my garden still nice. from last year. So we drain off the, the fartichokes. They're fully cooked at this point. Just like you would a smashed potato, or the same concept here. And this is a pound of, of Jerusalem artichokes. Then we're gonna take some butter flavored coconut oil, currently, currently obsessed with this I stuff. love that one, and I love that brand. Me too, I'm obsessed with it. So toss them around in the oil. We just wanna coat the outside of them. And just like you would smashed potatoes, you're gonna take like a glass or a bowl or something with a flat surface and just mush them down. I felt like the movie didn't age well, mm -hmm. personally. I felt like it, it kind of just aged right out. You watch some old <laughs> movies and you're like, oh, that still stands today. I feel like this one didn't. There were a lot of parts that I was like, I cannot believe they're talking about stuff like that, i.e. trying to trap men into being with them by getting getting themselves <sighs> pregnant. Like. I seemed, can't believe that was an actual like technique that that's like, that gals used back then. It seemed like a 50s movie to me yeah. instead of like an 80s movie. This I just, is 82. This is not even that long ago. Obviously, we were not born at this point, but this is not even that long ago. No, so shocking. Um, if you can believe it, Louis Gossett Jr., so the sergeant. My fave, my fave character of this whole movie. One of my faves, probably if not my fave as well. He, the director actually kept him separate and apart from everybody else to maintain that intimidating presence. Genius. Which I thought was awesome because I really came through. Oh my goodness, it came through so much that I also was terrified of him. And he won an Oscar for his performance in this movie. I'm a little bit shocked by that. Not him, I think Sergeant Foley rocked it. He knocked it out of the park, but I'm a little bit surprised that this movie gained any Oscar buzz. I'm, not, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's good, but is it Oscar worthy? I'm surprised it gained no. any buzz. <laughs> there's, there's way more romantic movies that I could think of that were like really good. This one, I don't know why this one became so popular, mm -hmm. it, to it, be honest. I have to say too, I am surprised that this is one that has like, gotten so into pop culture. Me too. Because of like, there wasn't, the storyline wasn't like, it's no notebook. No, that's like what I the, don't get about the, it. Not, not to compare the two, but I, I was very shocked that like, that actually gained some Oscar buzz. But Me too. Sergeant Foley did nail it, so his role in particular, fine. Oscar, right. but Oscar worthy. I thought so. I thought at the bare minimum. John Denver was meant to play the lead. What? Yep. And John I Travolta. I heard John Travolta, yes. Turned it down. Apparently, Sigourney Weaver, almost the role um, of Paula. Deborah Winger. Yeah, no, also, it's like Sigourney Weaver almost got that. Instead. Yes, yeah. yeah, that's crazy. Right. I love hearing about the actors that turned down the roles, because like that would have obviously been a completely different movie. All right, let's take a pause for some spice. Okay, buddy, buddy. Absolutely incredible. If you like spice, you have to try spicy Harissa. I am like, I, I have to have a jar in the Is fridge. Is it still at all that times. jar that you had from before? Yes. Because okay, you have gone through that rather quickly. Because it's addicting. And I you said it was so spicy, but that hasn't held you back. It's so good. It has such a delicious flavor. So we've just cooked the smashed artichokes just like you would regular potatoes. You just want to get some light color on them, add in that delicious sauce, a little bit of chive. Bob's your uncle, that's all it is to this recipe. Okay, but charcoal flavor as well. Charcoal flavor, now could can- you make those in the oven? You could, are they gonna taste as good? They're not. Can I just tell you that I would take a mouthful of these spicy sun chokes over those steamy love scenes <laughs> any day of the week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but why not combine the two? <laughs> that might hurt. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with that. Yeah, no, what? <laughs> okay, okay, they look so delectable. Are they nutty? I'm getting like, I feel like the sun chokes or farta chokes would be like having like a nutty flavor to them. I feel like people describe vegetables as nutty, just like what people describe meats as gamey when they don't know what they taste like. No, I feel like because <laughs> it's a tuber and because it had, like to me, it looks like, especially because you dr describe them like a water chestnut, I'm just getting like a nutty vibe. There's no nuttiness. There's no nuttiness. It's hard to describe what art, what, um, sun chokes taste like unless you've had them. They have a very distinct smell and um, taste. It's like describing what does watermelon taste like? Yeah. Probably. Like it tastes like watermelon. And then I like when people are like, it kind of tastes like a pineapple, but it you're like, it doesn't at all. It don't. <laughs> you have to try them. 
I, if you haven't tried sun chokes, I encourage you to try them. If you can get your hands on some tubers, throw some in the garden. Added them to the list. All right. All right. Now, now, what did you make? I'm so curious. Okay. Something that stuck out to you? like Something that instantly stuck out that when you hear it, you're going to be like, that is so obvious. My recipe inspiration that comes from the movie Officer and a Gentleman comes from the main character's name. Zach Mayo. Oh! Sergeant Foley is constantly referring to him as mayonnaise. I was yeah. like, all right, I'm making fresh homemade mayonnaise. <laughs> oh, okay, now I get it. That's why I was like, buddy, that is so on the nose that I knew that you were gonna pick it. I literally was like, this is the first time me and Kiki are gonna be making the exact same thing. All I kept thinking of this movie was like, oh dear lord, the sex scenes. That's okay, we know where Kiki's <laughs> head was at while she was watching this movie. That's all the, the only theme throughout. I was like, it's like, just like the constant sex that's just like, doing it and doing it and doing it. I was like, what do I make? <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, that part alone, yeah, that that's what gave, I think that's probably what made this movie like a standout to audiences at that time. I thought you were gonna take it in that direction too. I'm like, sex spicy love scenes okay yes that seems obvious as well but i love that you went with a unique recipe or a unique ingredient like the fartichokes okay what but did you i use? went the obvious i made a fresh homemade mayonnaise which mayonnaise is one of those things that i keep on the, in my pantry at all times i have an emergency bottle for my emergency bottle so that's two bottles on hand at all times however after making this and seeing how easy it is and seeing how, how much you can make from it, from stuff that you just have on hand, I was like, I don't ever need to worry about my mayonnaise consumption ever again. No. Couldn't just hit you with homemade mayonnaise because it literally is, I'm not joking, you can make this in under 60 seconds. It would be too quick of a video because it's so simple. You got your oil, your, your regular vegetable oil, you could do an olive oil, but then it will taste olive oily and that's not what I was going for here. That is so satisfying. Okay, I don't know. I thought the same thing, honey. I literally was like, like get it's this thickening in. before my eyes. Literally. I should stop doing this. <laughs> Someone's been watching way too many hot, steamy sexual scenes. Okay, literally though, 30 seconds later, I like couldn't get over this. I'm like, why am I not doing this constantly? Okay, but little tip here. If you don't have an immersion blender and you try to use a regular blender, you can't just go ahead and dump that oil in. And I'm telling you from personal experience, it will not thicken like that. You have to drizzle it in a tiny, tiny bit at a mm -hmm. time. It just will not emulsify like that. I think that you need to have one of these handheld blenders yes. in order to now you're doing properly it. do it. Now you're doing it. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> now you're doing it. <laughs> Okay, but now go with me on this, okay? Because okay. then the video's over right there. It's like, hey, there's some mayonnaise. Yeah, which like, oh my goodness, I want to eat that by the spoonful. Oh, look at this big thing. Okay, <laughs> but I love dunking French fries yes. in mayo. Oh, who doesn't? Is there, I know people, I know a lot of people out there think that's trashy. What? I don't get those people. I have to have a creamy sauce for fries. Agreed. Man, absolutely mandatory. I would take that over a ketchup any day. I was just gonna say those exact words. Take the ketchup <sighs> away, give me a creamy mayo. Never mind a creamy homemade mayo. That's like comfort food city. Thank you. Agreed with, agree with you on that. However, I will keep it real with you. I'm not doing a traditional potato french fry today because I have this rutabaga and I bought it because last week I made beef stew. And have you ever got a specific item to put in a specific recipe and then you forget to use that? I item? hate when I do that. <laughs> I literally was like making the beef, beef stew about to serve it. And then I was like, looked over and like the rutabaga <laughs> caught my eye. I was like, no, let's go with some baked rutabaga French fries. You know how you can turn any veg into a French fry? You yes. got your zook, you got your carrot. I'm doing what I call oven frying, which is healthier. And anyone out there who has um, a air fryer these days, which those are still like the hot, the hottest thing in the market, get yourself one of those, go to town on that. I did it on the, the Ninja Wood Fire Outdoor Oven. Ooh, now my question to you is gonna be, did they crisp up? Because sometimes when you're doing root vegetable fries, point. like sweet potato fries for the life of me, like even if you do the corn, the corn starch on the outside, they never get crunchy. They didn't get super crispy, but they got crispy on the outside and they were a little bit flimsy, but they were, it was great with the mayo. And was the flavor there? The flavor was there because of this particular ingredient. You could go just salt, 
but Kiki and I are obsessed with using barbecue rubs <sighs> on everything. This so, one in particular is like a game changer on like wedges or fries. Totally agree. This is Cluck and Squeal. It's a Canadian brand. Our friend Mark Cardinale owns this pro um, owns this company. So we are like Cluck and Squeal obsessed right now. So I threw some of that on there at the last minute because I was gonna go salt, but then because I keep um, my Cluck and Squeal all purpose near my salt and pepper, I was like, I'm throwing that in there. Oh yeah. Just some added some some added flavor there. Okay, now these took a long time. I cooked them at 350 in the um, the Ninja Wood Fire Outdoor Oven. Did you do smoke flavor or no? I didn't do smoke flavor on them. You so could. You could, actually that would be really good if on If you these. wanted to, yes. you absolutely could. Ooh. They took an hour. They took an hour and at 350, because anyone who's cooked with rutabaga before, it takes a long time if you're boiling it and I wanted to make sure these were fully cooked through with some crispiness on the outside. So to me, after an hour, that was my done preference. Now if you have a rutabaga, it's not like a potato where you can eat the skin because rutabagas are coated in wax mm -hmm. to stay good in the grocery store for a very long time. So don't do not eat that skin. That's why I showed the peeling, which I can't tell you. There is like maybe like top, like 10 things in life that feel that good as peeling a, a <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh my God. Well that certainly didn't go that good. <laughs> Maddie just gets her kicks by peeling a rutabaga. <laughs> I do. Give it a try. It feels so satisfying. Like with, I'm with those, like hand, like a sharp hand peeler. Buddy, I'm with you. I enjoyed every second of that. I just did a top ten best feelings in the world. Come I just did me. a butternut squash yesterday and thought the same thing. Like, why is this so good? Okay, yes, but it's because rutabaga skin's a little bit thicker. I think that's why I love my skin. I love. Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness, what is wrong with me today? Look at how delicious this is. Okay. The, the the pairing oh. of these things were so delicious. Okay, this is I just could eat simple. that whole thing. Yes, I almost did. This is just so simple. Rutabanga and mayo. That's like, to me, that is the ultimate comfort food. Like, I could literally eat that the entire I thing as like, as like a meal. There's something about like crispiness being dunked into something creamy. And yes. Because that mayo was like, that mayo tasted like jacked up because yes. it's homemade. It just, ta everything tastes more like strong and like the store-bought one, it just ain't the same anymore. Oh, you're making me want homemade mayo so bad. Zach Mayonnaise, I think he'd, I think he'd approve of this recipe. Zach Mayonnaise would love this. Now, do you believe that Zach Mayonnaise and Deborah Winger did not get along in real life? Okay, why is that the people that don't, the actors that don't get along on screen, they have like the most chemistry. It's like Dirty Dancing. It's like there's so much sexual tension Patrick there. Patrick Swayze and Jennifer Grey also apparently didn't get along. Yeah, that is so weird. I will say one of my biggest observations from this movie was the fact that everybody looked real. Like super real. There were no hair extensions. There were no teeth veneers. Like you know those like everyone in Hollywood now has that disgusting fake overly white yes. glow in the dark white looking teeth look. And they all have the same teeth. Like teeth are individual. Yes. Okay. I like like Jewel has like a, like a notoriously crooked teeth. Agreed. I like that. Can I also go as far to say that I like like a little bit of a yellow tinge? The overly white looks like so fake. I'm so sick of plastic. Fake. I'm so sick of fake. There fake was, lips, fake yeah, eyelashes. There was not a lip injection to be seen and I didn't know how much I was craving like that look and how I was just like mesmerized by thinking nobody had fake hair nobody boobs, had fit fake well, bo billowy boobs boobs were back then too fake boobs obviously had i don't their think that's popular yeah definitely not deborah winger didn't have them she had natural ones they looked fantastic she looked fantastic throughout the entire movie i couldn't help but just take be like mesmerized by the fact that everybody looked so real and in today's movie everything just looks so fake mm -hmm. also I love that this movie went there with trying to include a woman in the squad. Though I forget her name, but Seeger. she- Seeger. Seeger? Yeah. Constable Seeger. Mm -hmm. Okay, so she was trying to make it up the wall and was constantly bawling. Too like, much bawling. A lot of crying. Get some upper body strength. A lot of waterworks for coming from all the women. And I was like, I just like don't like that women were portrayed to be so weak in this movie. And I didn't either. I also did not like how they just like let her get by in the training. Yes. Like she couldn't do it and they weren't just like, okay, you need to like try hard or do some push-ups. They were just mm -hmm. like, ugh, she can't do it. She's a woman. Get let her behind the wall anyway. No. Okay, apparently that actress in real life, she had the toughest part of playing that role, she said, was to act like she was not in good shape. Really? Yeah. Because she was so ripped and in yeah, shape. Yeah, she said she had she struggled awesome. to fake like she was getting up that wall because she probably could get up the wall easily. 
Okay, that's a really interesting tip. Good yeah. one, Keith. I didn't like that either. I was I didn't notice that as well, and I was I didn't I like that they included a woman, but yes. I felt they fell short. It's like they were cutting edge at the time because at the time, obviously, that was probably like groundbreaking that a woman was featured on that squad. However, it just it's it just shows it was a product of its time, which women were seen as like crybabies. <laughs> I did not know how many pop culture references this movie like ha has in pop culture. Like The Simpsons, I didn't know that that scene at the end where um, Zach carries Deborah Winger out into the um, from the factory. I did not know that was from that movie. And then when I saw that, I was like, oh, that's why everything in pop culture shows that scene. Apparently, Richard Gere hated that ending and didn't want to do it and thought it was going to be stupid, but then once he saw it, he was like, oh, okay, it all mm -hmm. kind of goes. It had such a dramatic conclusion to the show with that song, loved it, and I, I thought it was awesome, an awesome way to end the movie. I felt like that also did not age well. Like, he's, like, taking her out of this, like, factory. He's like, come here, baby, I can take care of you financially. Okay, but that like, outfit, I, that <laughs> uniform, let's just yeah, talk about I that love a, a man in uniform. <laughs> that is no secret, but still. <laughs> If you could make a food inspired by an officer and a gentleman, what food would you make? And please let us know if you have any movie suggestions for what you want to see us make from next. Let us know in the comments below.